Last week, we kicked off a new series called Equipped. The Gospels contain uh, the teachings of Jesus, like the Sermon on the Mount or his many parables. Uh, There are lessons to be learned from what Jesus said. However, the Gospels contain more than just what Jesus taught. There were lessons to be learned um, by by what Jesus did. There were values and character traits and instincts and methods that Jesus wanted to instill in his disciples. And he instilled them through experiences, not just in what he taught. Uh, Jesus performed miracles in their presence. Uh, Jesus would give them tasks to accomplish. He would even make them do things like, you know, climb a mountain. Uh, And in all these experiences, Jesus was equipping them for the future. One of our directives here at TFRC is to be future focused, where we continually adapt to engage every generation. And Jesus continues to give us experiences to equip us for the future. We can all look back at our lives and see how our past um, has prepared us for the present. And so it makes sense that things that are happening to us now are preparing us for the future. Uh, We are revisiting some of these experiences from the Gospels to look for that value or character trait or instinct or method that Jesus was instilling in those first disciples and to be challenged to adopt those for ourselves, believing that they will equip us for whatever God has next for us. Uh, Scripture for this morning comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 12 to 16. Second week in a row that we're in the Gospel of Luke, but you can turn there in your Bibles or look it up on your phones. Uh, Luke is the third book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. Um, This is a story of Jesus healing a leper. Now, in the Bible, the word leprosy can refer to a variety of skin diseases, It does not necessarily refer to what we would know as leprosy. Um, However, whatever skin disease the man has in this story, uh, he's in pretty bad shape. Um, And there is a lesson to be learned in this healing, a lesson that doesn't really have as much to do with skin diseases as a lesson about encountering the ugly. And so our scripture reader for this morning is Anessa Voss. And so Anessa, go ahead and make your way up to the podium. As she does, I'm going to ask if you're able to please stand and face the center of the room. Uh, We read from the center of the room to remind us that scripture is to be central in our lives. And we stand because we believe this is the word of God. And so Anessa, whenever you are ready, please read from Luke chapter 5, verses 12 to 16. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, Don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Anessa, thank you very much. You may be seated. Uh, Some of you know, because I've talked about it a couple times, that I have this irrational fear of sharks. um, Mainly coming, that mainly comes from watching the movie Jaws as a kid. I also watched some piranha movies and that really didn't help either. But when I uh, did go to the beach as a teenager in Southern California, I did have the courage to go in the water and go boogie boarding. I enjoyed doing that. And one time, uh, when I was boogie boarding, I just reached the shore after catching a wave and I was getting ready to go back out. And I looked to where I was going to go back out, and there is a fin above the water. Uh, It was not too far from where I just caught the wave. Totally freaked me out. Um, And even though I was on shore, I was terrified. Now, long story short, it was the school dolphins. I was never in any danger. It was fine. Um, But that was still the last time I went boogie boarding. We all have things that we are afraid of. Anyone else have a fear of sharks? Anyone? Okay. Uh, What about snakes? Who's afraid of snakes? Any snake? Uh, Spiders? People afraid of spiders? Okay. Uh, Anyone afraid of heights? Yes? Okay. Flying? Anyone afraid of flying? 
Okay, not too many of you. Uh, enclosed spaces. Anyone afraid of enclosed spaces? Dentists. Anyone afraid of dentists? See, some hands went up. Yes, children, you can raise your hand. It's fine. Uh, public speaking. Anyone afraid of public speaking? Yep, me too. Okay. Um, we're afraid of these things because they could hurt us or make us, they make us nervous and uncomfortable. And so the things that we're afraid of, we stay away from. And we will go out of our way to keep away from them. We avoid snakes and spiders and heights and flying in enclosed spaces and going to the dentist and public speaking because they are unpleasant for us. In Jesus' day, this was true for lepers. Skin diseases are contagious. No one wanted to get one. And so everybody stayed away from lepers. They were kept out of cities and towns. They were not allowed to be a part of society. They were both physically and socially ugly. And so Jesus and his disciples encounter a leper. They encounter this ugliness. And the nature of this ugliness, the nature of the ugly that they encounter went beyond the leper's physical suffering. There was a spiritual component to it. Lepers were considered what was called unclean. If you were unclean in this society, you couldn't go to the temple to worship. The temple was a special place to encounter God. And so unclean people couldn't fully participate in their faith. And the idea of clean versus unclean was a major part of the Jewish faith. Uh, probably the best known application to this day is the understanding of certain foods being clean or unclean. There were clean animals you could eat and there were unclean animals you couldn't eat. And most of us know that Jews to this day will not eat pork because it's an unclean animal, but there are other unclean animals on this list. Things like crabs and frogs and rabbits these, along with many other animals, were unclean to eat. And if you ate them, you'd be considered unclean and for a time would not be able to fully participate in the faith. And if you eat Bugs Bunny, that's not good. So um, it was even worse. Being unclean was even worse if you had a skin disease. The Bible, again, would use the word leprosy to refer to many kinds of skin diseases. But if you had leprosy or any skin disease, you couldn't be considered clean until the disease was gone. Leviticus 13 outlines how to determine if you have a defiling skin disease or leprosy. If you had some kind of discoloration on your skin, what you would do is you would go show yourself to the priest and the priest would examine this suspicious looking skin and the priest was given criteria for deciding if it was a defiling, contagious disease or not. And in some cases, the priest would declare the person unclean. Some cases, they would declare the person clean. In other cases, the person would have to be quarantined. They would be quarantined for seven days and then be re-examined. And then when examined after that first seven days, they could be quarantined for another seven days. Um, and then after those 14 days, they could be declared either clean or unclean. Now, since COVID, this whole idea of quarantine has new meaning for us, yes? Okay, we have a new appreciation for quarantining. Um, uh, because, you know, we all know what it's like to have to be quarantined to see if we have COVID or not, or to be quarantined because we tested positive for COVID. Well, if you got a certain kind of rash, you could be quarantined for 14 days and it could be all for nothing. And if you were declared unclean because of the skin disease, like COVID, you had to stay isolated until the symptoms went away. And for some skin diseases, it was not uncommon for the symptoms to never go away. Those people were in permanent isolation. They could not approach other people. Others were afraid of them. Lepers lived with shame, even though getting a contagious disease was not their fault. Uh, they could not earn a living and had to depend on charity. And again, post-COVID, I have a whole new appreciation for what that meant for a leper. And so Jesus and his disciples 
encounter a leper. They encounter the ugly. As it says in verse 12, going back to Luke chapter 5, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. A man covered in leprosy. Covered. It was an advanced case. And again, Leviticus 13 gives instructions. Verses 45 and 46 of Leviticus 13. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes. Let their hair be unkept. Cover the lower part of their face and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. Now, unlike COVID, there wasn't a whole lot of treatment back then. So this man, in an advanced case of leprosy, had no real hope. And if this was actual leprosy leprosy, what made it even worse is that could eat away your flesh. Some people lost limbs because of it. It was horrific and disgusting. And the passage says that this story happens in one of the towns. Now, either Luke is referring to the fact that this happened on the outskirts of a town, or this man came into town. If he came into town, it was out of sheer desperation in his suffering because lepers weren't allowed in town. And even if this happened on the outskirts of town, he shouldn't have been approaching anyone. He was supposed to yell unclean to keep people away. Again, COVID has given me a new appreciation for even that part of the story. Think about coughing and sneezing before and after COVID. Coughing and sneezing has completely changed. Before COVID, if someone coughed or sneezed, not a big deal. Now someone coughs and sneezes, and it's like we're all thinking, unclean, unclean. Jesus was this man's last hope. In desperation, he comes to Jesus. And he believes Jesus can heal him. It's just a question of whether Jesus would be willing. And this isn't a request only for physical healing. It wasn't just the disease. It was how the lepers were treated. He was treated with shame, contempt, fear. And he wanted to be treated human again. And so Jesus is approached by the ugly, physical ugliness, social ugliness, spiritual ugliness, and Jesus nurtures. Jesus nurtures the ugly. Going to verses 13 and 14 of the passage. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. The leper says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And the first thing Jesus does is he touches the man. Now, this man hasn't had any human contact since he's had this disease. He's been keeping people away. People have been keeping him away. And so he comes to Jesus, and Jesus gives him human contact and says, I am willing, be clean. Now, make no mistake, God allows human suffering, and I cannot explain all the reasons why God allows human suffering. But I do know what God thinks of suffering because Jesus shows us what God thinks of human suffering. What does God think of blindness or deafness or the lame or death? What does God think of that? Well, Jesus shows us what God thinks of that because Jesus comes and gives sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf and makes the lame walk and resurrection of the dead. That's what God thinks of human suffering. And what does God think of the ugliness of leprosy? I am willing, be clean. 
And what does God think of the ugliness of isolation? Jesus heals him so he's not contagious. And he tells him, go show yourself to the priest, offer sacrifices, just as it says in Leviticus, and get back to living your life. So Jesus heals the man and gets him back to living life. Jesus just negates the ugly. He negates the ugly. When Jesus touched the man and healed him, he reversed the natural course of things. Or maybe a better way of saying that is he restored the natural course of things. You see, Jesus didn't have to touch the man to heal him. Jesus simply could have said, I am willing, be clean, and he would have been clean. The touching part was unnecessary. In fact, Jesus has real reason to not touch the leper. Because it says in Leviticus 5, verse 3, if they touch human uncleanness, anything that would make them unclean, even though they are unaware of it, but then they learn of it and they realize their guilt. According to Leviticus, if someone touches the unclean, they become unclean. But when Jesus touches the unclean, the unclean becomes clean. If you get into proximity of someone who's sick, you could get sick. But if Jesus gets into proximity of someone who's sick, the sick can get well. Jesus negates the ugly. And Jesus is reprogramming the instincts of his disciples because their current instincts are, let's avoid the ugly. And Jesus says, no, no, when it comes to the ugly, don't run away from it. Let it come to you and bring my healing presence to it. Don't avoid the ugly, encounter the ugly. And we have some contemporary disciples of Jesus who will even run to the ugly. Missions partners that we partner with, the Mustard Seed or the Aka Outreach Foundation or McCallie's Home, just to name a few, or even a ministry like Sage's Women's Center to seek out those who are in tough, sometimes even ugly situations. And so Jesus heals the man, tells the man not to say anything, but the word gets out anyway. Going back to the passage one more time in verses 15 and 16. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to the lonely places and prayed. When we come into contact with the ugliness in the world, going into the chaos of people's lives, when we reach out, we're going to be encountering things that aren't pleasant to encounter. So let's not have a sanitized, romantic view of what reaching out is going to look like. It's going to get ugly. And we don't even need to go out and find the ugly. It will come and find us. We just have to stop trying to avoid it. Jesus withdrew to lonely places and prayed, not to avoid it, but to maintain the strength to stay in it. Because if we encounter the ugly, it will take a toll on us. It's why we avoid it, because it takes a toll on us. And we will need the power of God to keep us going. Now we see this instinct to encounter the ugly again in the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, it's not an ugliness of a disease, but this topic of being unclean comes up again. And there are numerous kinds of ugly. In Acts chapter 10, Peter has a vision of unclean animals. And Peter is told to eat them. And he refuses, saying he has never eaten anything impure or unclean. And this voice tells him, don't call anything impure that God has made clean. Again, just as Jesus made the unclean leper clean, immediately after this vision, Peter is invited to the house of a centurion, a Roman centurion named Cornelius. 
Cornelius is a Gentile. And Peter goes to this Gentile's house in a city called Caesarea. And we read in Acts chapter 10 and verse 24, the following day he arrived in Caesarea and Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. And while talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. And he said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. The Gentiles were considered unclean, and Peter was raised not to associate with them. But Jesus can make the unclean clean. And there's this long history of racial tensions between the Jews and the Gentiles. And what does God think of that? What does God think of that long history of racial tensions between the Jews and the Gentiles? Well, this is what God thinks of it. He sends Peter to the house of a Gentile. And not just any Gentile, a Roman centurion. The Romans who occupy their land, who torture and kill Jews. Those Gentiles. Don't treat them as unclean. And here is the reality of the gospel. The reality of the gospel is that God meets us in our ugliness. There are numerous kinds of ugliness. Chaos comes in many forms. And God doesn't avoid our ugliness. He meets us in it. As it says in Romans 5, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And the greatest example of Christ meeting us in our ugliness is the cross. On the cross, Jesus encountered the worst of our ugliness. And when Jesus died on the cross, in God's eyes, so did our ugliness. By Jesus' blood, we are made clean. Please pray with me. And Lord, once again, we come before you grateful that you meet us in our sinfulness, in our chaos, in our ugliness, and you come to redeem us and restore us. And for that, Lord, we do thank you. And Lord, I would ask that you would put in our hearts a desire, energy, um, encouragement that is we face the ugliness in our world, that you would give us wisdom in how to bring your healing presence to it. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And receive God's blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.